Police unions in California unveil national reform agenda amid heightened tensions over police tactics. Is this good or is this bullshit? Let's get into it. Um, what is it? We're going to talk about this reform agenda. Let me put this down here in the in the in the, in the titles. They basically saying they're going to reform the police. My question is this: Can you reform a thug? Can you? Can you reform a cop? Let's see what they're talking about here. Three police unions in California, including the Los Angeles Police Protective League, have unveiled a national reform agenda, which they say is an effort to improve outcomes. What outcomes? I don't know. It ain't really telling. It ain't really saying. I don't know what they're talking about. I don't know. Let's go a little deeper into it. Where's my screen? Here we go. Proposed guidelines released in partnership with San Francisco and San Jose Police Officer Associations come amid heightened tensions over policing tactics and sweeping calls for reforms sparked by the death of George Floyd in Minneapolis. Let's see what this thing is talking about in this police reform. It says the following steps are laid out in the reform plan. A national database for former police officers fired for gross misconduct, which would prevent other agencies from hiring them. Look, that's bullshit. I'll call BS on the first line. I have a brother and two close friends that are police officers. When you are applying to be a police officer, they stick a microscope 10 feet down your ass. They know everything about you when you're going to become a cop. Hell, I was actually talking to a family friend yesterday uh, who's also, uh, whose son is a cop, who I, I know also, I'm not going to mention his name. But he was talking about how he stole a Twinkie in college when he was playing college basketball. And when he applied for the California Highway Patrol, that report was in his file <laughs> from sitting a Twinkie at 19 to applying for the CHP close to 30. They still know he, they still knew he, he, he stole a Twinkie almost 10 years ago. So if they knew he stole a Twinkie. Would they know if a police officer had been fired for gross misconduct? Don't, when you get a job, they apply, they call your last job and be like, hey, on. Who was this nigga? How was he? Did, he? did he did he cuss out the customers? Something. So that right there tells you, okay, we starting off with bullshit. A sweeping use of force standard emphasizes a reverence for life, de-escalation, a duty to intercede in situations of excessive force or misconduct, as well as strong accountability provisions. Now I'm with that. I like that. My question is. How is it going to be enforced? Are the black officers going to be the ones that get sent to jail for not interceding while they're making the excuse for the white ones to not intercede? How will this be enforced? Because we all know that that, that bullshit has blue wall that the police have. We all know the police make up shit and lie on reports. And we also know that the police don't like being accountable. Whenever someone does, another police officer does say something to them. They act like goddamn nothing. Like, well, well, you, 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 you say something to me. I, I won't, I won't respond to your next call. If you need my help, they do shit like that. You're right. Weller. The cop that killed Michael Newby in, in your city, uh, Louis, I heard about that killing in Louisville, was later assigned somewhere else. Yep. That happens all the time. That happens all the time. These police officers don't get, that happened with um 
the that woman police officer that killed Terrence Crutcher with his hands up. She just got reassigned to the next police officer right next door. Same thing with that Ohio cop that killed Tamir Rice. Reassigned. So they say that, okay, they're going to do something about reassigning. We'll see where that goes. An early warning system to identify officers that may need more training. Okay. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm going to give you one example. One, one, one thing that helped you guys, police union. All your damn police officers need more training. Six weeks ain't enough for somebody to, to go through a six-week-long academy. Now you give them a gun and a badge and 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 no per prosecution. Are you serious? To me, this is a bullshit one right here because the FBI stated long ago that white supremacist organizations have infiltrated uh, police and all that kind of stuff. They know who these guys are. These hell, these motherfuckers be having um, they be having uh tattoos and shit. That particular that one, I'll never forget that one officer that uh, was killed by Micah Johnson over in Dallas. Well, it was five of them that was killed. It was five of them that was that were killed, and one of the officers that got killed had Facebook posts showing Nazi emblems. And he still had a job. Y'all think I'm bullshitting? Look at this. Look at this. No, I don't want your little pop-up. FBI has quietly investigated the white supremacist infiltration of law, of law enforcement. They're at every level. So that means right here, we know just based on the on the FBI's investigation, they should already know who is and who isn't, shouldn't they? But they said they want to create a database. So to me, when they say they want to do shit like create a database, that's them giving themselves more money to put in their own pockets. Reoccurring and frequent training in crisis intervention and de-escalating track uh, training. Okay, that can help. But whenever we see this word here, training, get that. That means more money for them. Training means, okay, we're about to get 100 million new dollars, spend 8 million on training and pocket the rest. Why don't they need training to not kill Jews or white people? Why do they only need training to not kill black people running from them? That right there looks like a little bit of an excuse. A little bit of money flipping hands right here. A publicly accessible use of force analysis website. So the public can monitor when and how force is used. I like that. But I only like that if it shows the name of the police officer and has an accurate account of the type of force that they use. We got to put these police officers out there by name that continually use excessive force. The joint statements calls for a reform agenda to be adopted across the country. I'm down with a cross country adaptation, but this year, eh. Eh, kind of like looks like weak sauce to me. It's kind of looking weak right here, people. It's kind of looking weak. Here's my solution to police reform. You're going to hear it here, but I'll say it again. Police reform is hire cops and hold them to the same standards you hold someone who sold, who who sells insurance to. Anybody who sells insurance or securities funds or who sold them in the past, you know what that's like. Yes, you got to go through a background check, but also you have to 
be insured and be bonded. You can't lie. If you lie, guess what? If you lie to someone about where their funds are, you tell them those funds are federally, federally guaranteed and they're not, you're going to jail. You have to be able to hold a bond to stay in business. And your bond, your bond rate, your ability to have a bond depends on your ability and your history of being someone who's dependable, honest, and trustworthy. Because the minute you get caught up doing any kind of thing in those fields, you're now uninsurable. And if you're uninsurable, you can't work. Well, how about take that to the police department? You can't reform a racist. But what you can do is tell that racist if you put your knee in a nigga's neck, you're going to jail for 25 years. If you're lucky. What you can do is say, okay, if you pull that that baton out too many times and knock somebody upside their head, you can't work here anymore because we can't insure you. If you hit them with their job security, if you hit them with having them pay their own fines when they fuck somebody up, the police are reform themselves. Yep, you read about that Weller dude in Kentucky who was 35 minutes away. You're right, that, that, that Breonna Taylor killing. That Breonna Taylor killing. They were at the wrong goddamn house, 35 miles away. Now, what if the, the judge, and not just the police, the judge, the DA, all of them. Do you think he would have checked twice on that address before he signed off on that no-knock warrant to kill a black woman, Breonna Taylor, in her sleep? If he had to ensure himself, if his performance, if his ability to continue working and continue getting paid every two weeks was dependent upon a review of his own performance, you think we'd have a different police department then? Yeah, so I'm looking at this police reform thing and I'm not impressed. But you know what? Look. It is a step in the right direction, and I hate fucking using that term, step in the right direction, because it's usually bullshit. But I can see it, you know, doing something, a national thing. My only thing is how is it going to be enforced? 